Hello, and today we're gonna to do a fire hydrant inspection. So first we'll record the date and time, and then the location, which is just outside of the new school. GPS coordinates, we'll grab those once we're done the, the exercise. Hydrant number as well, we'll, uh, we will look at the mapping system shortly. And the manufacturer and model, which is located right on the side of the hydrant, and it's an AVK model 27-80. So with that initial uh, information taken down, we'll open the hydrant and see how it operates and how it turns. Before we do any operation of the hydrant, it's good to inspect the caps, the O-rings in there, any sand in there, and uh, the threads. So once it's fully closed, there should be no leaks if the nozzles and the gasket form a good seal. And you don't want to over tighten it. So we'll check this bigger one now. So again, we want to check the O-rings. On older fire hydrants, uh, the O-rings could dry out and crack and become really brittle and just fall apart in your hands. So you can get, uh, get O-ring replacement kits and install them. When you do these inspections, you can identify which ones need uh, new O-rings, and then you can order and install. So now we'll go ahead and close it, but you don't have to really tighten it, just tighten it enough so that it seems like it's not going to come loose. So we usually determine which way is best to shoot the water. Um, the school's on this side, but we have some open country over there, so we'll go that way. So lastly, we'll check the last uh, O-ring on this cap before we open and test it. Yeah, at, at least a minute, let it flow. We did it about 30 seconds. We just wanted to run it till it was clear. We didn't want to run it so much that the fire pump would kick on. We're not doing fire flow tests at this time. We're just doing the operational inspection of this hydrant. So we'll slowly close it to avoid water hammer. Yeah, water hammer is caused by uh, closing valves or shutting off water too quickly. And also the, a change in direction of piping could cause water hammer. So when we get to this last little bit of closing it, just do it nice and gentle. and close it so it's just slightly tight enough, but not over tight. And then now we will check if the hydrant is self-draining and just remove your hand, your glove and put your hand to see if there's a vacuum. And it does feel good, it is draining. So on this checklist, we'll continue um, the first question is, uh, is the hydrant available and accessible? And as we can see, yes it is. Is the paint in good condition? We say yes. It is a newer hydrant, luckily, but uh, there is some hydrants out there that really need some attention. And that's, uh, that's really where this ins inspection test uh, uh, comes in handy. You can identify which ones need some work. So is the hydrant at proper height? I would say yes. So if the hydrant is, is free and you have access to the bolts underneath, just in case you have to remove this, you would have access to wrenches. Sometimes the ground around a hydrant could be up over this flange. So I would say this would be a good, a good height. So is the hydrant properly orientated towards the truck access? So obviously a fire truck would come on this side and have access to the ports on each side. So yes. Does hydrant require protection, such as traffic bollards? Um, I could say possibly yes, because there's an access road that comes this way, and then the main road comes this way. So if there was a delivery truck that kind of took this corner too sharp, it could possibly hit here. So possibly traffic bollards around here. So in that case, we could put in the comments, um, a heavy traffic area. The breakaway has been damaged. Uh, since this hydrant is fully operational, the traffic breakaways 
are in the hydrant and uh, they're designed to break away and have this hydrant topple over instead of uh, hitting the shaft and and affecting the water main so with it fully operational the breakaways are not damaged are the, are the nozzle caps slightly more than hand tight I'd say yes that's what we made sure we didn't want to over tighten them is the hydrant free from ice or water in the barrel so we checked if it was draining and this one is draining so it should be free of ice and water once it's done draining um, are the thread outlets caps and stems in good condition and lubricated uh, we inspected the caps and we would say yes are the caps o-ring seals gaskets in place we'd say yes is the operating nut worn twisted or broken this would be the operating nut this is what opens and closes the hydrant and this is this is the operating wrench so it turned nicely so i would say nothing is damaged there so we'd say no it is not worn twisted or broken and was a hydrant gate valve attached before testing no we uh, i do not have one right now but that gate valve would be attached here and then you can control the flow from that gate valve does the operating nut turn without difficulty um, if, if you looked um, it was kind of difficult at first and that's usual but once it's once we did those first turns it turned without difficulty did the hydrant flow until clear yes it did is the control valve box exposed and free of damage so this is the control valve box right here or otherwise known as a isolation valve so we would open and close that to control the flow of the hydrant if we needed to do to do maintenance on the hydrant we would isolate from the water main in this valve so we could see the valve nut right down in here so it's it's free of debris for the next point we were looking at the valve box is the control valve box exposed and free from damage we would say yes it is in good condition uh, did the valve box have its lid properly in place? Yes, I had to I had to remove it. It was sitting nicely. Is the valve box free of debris? Yes, it looks good. There's a little bit of silt and sand, but that's from normal runoff from the area. Okay, we're going to exercise this valve and see if it fully opens and closes. So right now we're closing it fully so we're going to the right which is clockwise and to open it is the opposite okay it's fully closed right now so we'll do kind of a, a rough count to see how many turns it takes to fully open it So it's roughly about uh, 19 turns to fully open. So we did it without flowing the hydrant. So we're pretty much just exercising the valve. Um, I don't want to open up the hydrant again to cause more disturbance in the water main. So we will identify that on the, on the checklist that that wasn't performed. But the valve seems to be in good operating order. If the, the valve wasn't operating properly, uh, we'd have to identify it uh, to investigate further. There could be debris uh, blocking that shaft from turning, which would be um, a big problem that would uh, can, you would need to excavate it. And uh, in this area, it would be horrible to have to do because it's uh, paved and all new cement. So we, if it wasn't operating properly, we would identify it and then we'd put it in our uh, priority list. Control valve operate through fully range? We'll say yes, but in the comments we'll put did not, did not test during a flow. But there's another point here that asks if the flow completely stopped when closing the valve. So we will carry on that comment to say that we did not test it during the flow. In this checklist, there's a yes, no, and an NA, which is not available. So that's where we would check where it asks if the flow completely stopped when closing the valve. It asked uh, how many full turns. So we counted from 
from a close to open position, roughly 19 turns. So the last couple points, uh, did hydro flow completely stop when closing the operating nut? Yes, it did. So again, the operating nut is the top nut that you that you open with the, the hydrant wrench. Is hydrant free from leaks at outlet at the top or bottom of the hydrant? There was no leaks during this exercise. Does it fully drain in under 60 minutes? And it, it had a good vacuum, so that indicates that it's uh, dropping pretty quick. Did the barrel need to be pumped out? In this case, it was draining, so I would say no. But this is a good, this is a good uh, comment to document because there are some that aren't self-draining and those should be identified for for when you go to winterize your hydrants so that you remember to make sure that you go to that hydrant and drain all of the water out and was this hydrant winterized is is one of the last comments checks on here so at this point in mid-august it does not have to be winterized and it is self-draining so i believe that it would not have to be winterized and we can put that in the comments so at this point we'll say no and in the comments uh it is it is self-draining and the last comment is if hydrant was deemed non-operational was an out of service bag or ring placed on the hydrant we'd say no because this is a fully operational hydrant but um in some cases when a hydrant is not operational there's an o-ring that says out of service you could put on here so that would indicate that it's not in service. If, if the fire trucks came or the fire department came, they would see that and they would know not to use it. So the rest of this checklist talks about fire, fire hydrant flow tests. Uh, we're not doing it at, at, this, at this time. We're just doing the operational inspection of this hydrant. But if you can see on the sheet, it talks about you have the flow one, flow two, and a static pressure, and also a total flow. You have the outlet, the static PSI, residual PSI, a PITO PSI, discharge coefficient, a flow in gallons per minute, and how many minutes it was flushed. And finally, at the bottom, we talk about signatures. We have an inspector or operator signature, as well as the date, and then a public works manager. Like once all this report is done, it could be shared with the public work, works manager or people higher up in the department.